How's it going everybody? It's your bro here, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how we can make a simple calculator program using Java. So let's get into it. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Your support will help keep this channel running. All right, everybody, so let's get started. So we're going to create a new Java project. I'm going to call this calculator and then click finish. Then if it prompts you to create a module, I'm going to click don't create. And then within the source folder, let's create a new class. So file, new class, and I will also call this calculator, or you can call this main, call it whatever you want really. So calc you later. And then I'm going to check public static void main so I don't have to type in this line and then click finish. So before we forget, let's import a few things. So there's three imports that we're going to need. Import everything related to Java X dot swing, as well as everything related to Java dot AWT. And then lastly, import Java dot AWT dot event. And that is all the imports that we need. So let's create a constructor for this class. So I'm going to do this maybe right before the main method. So we type in the name of the class to create a constructor. So calc you later. And then we're going to have this class implement an action listener. So implements action listener. And then there is a method that we have to implement. That is the action performed method. So within this main class, let's create an instance of our calculator class. So we can just type in calculator, let's call this calc equals new calculator. All right, and then before the constructor, let's declare a few things. And then let me just add some spaces. All right, so let's declare everything that we'll need. So first we'll need a J frame and we'll call this frame and then we'll need a text field, a J text field, and we'll call it text field. Now let's create an array of J buttons. So J button, then straight braces for an array. And this will hold all of our numbered buttons equals new J button, and then straight braces. And we'll want 10 buttons for 10 numbers one through nine and well zero, I guess too. And we'll create an array of J buttons to hold all of our function buttons. So that's things like add, subtract, divide, equals, decimal. So J button, straight braces for an array. And we'll call these function buttons equals new J button. And this will hold eight buttons. Let's name all of the function buttons. The number buttons will make anonymous. So for the function buttons, J button will have a add button, a sub button, a multiply button. We'll just call it MUL button, MUL short for multiply, and then DIV for divide button. And let's do this again, but on the next line, just so everything's organized. So J button, and this next row will be for decimal button equals, but we'll just say EQU button, DEL button for delete, and CLR for clear button. And then we'll create a J panel to hold all of the separate buttons. So this will be J panel, and we will call this panel. So we just have a few things left to declare. So I'm going to be reusing one font for all of my buttons. So I think it's actually best if we declare a font that we can reuse easily. So what I'm going to type is font, my font equals new font. Then within parentheses, I can specify a font style and I like the font ink free. So I'm going to use that one, but use whatever font that you want. And then I want this to be bold. So in the next field, I'm going to type font dot bold and then a size and I will pick 30 because that's a decent size for my buttons. And then lastly, we just have a few double values to declare. So double num one, this will be our first number. And let's set this to zero. 
number two equals zero as well, and our result, and that will also equal zero. And then a char value called operator. And this will hold the either the multiply character, subtract, uh, addition, and then division. So it's gonna hold one of those. Okay, that is everything that we need to declare. So let's move on to our constructor and begin here. So let's finish initializing the frame. So at the top, I'm going to type frame equals new j frame. And then we can give this frame a title. So I'm going to type in calc you later. And then there's a few other things we need to do, such as frame dot set default close operation. Then the operation is j frame dot exit on close. So this allows us to close out of the program. And then a size frame dot set size. I usually pick 420 by 420, but we're going to need a slightly bigger height. So 550 was a good height for this. And then we're going to use no layout manager, at least for the frame. So set layout null. For all the buttons though, we're going to use a grid layout, but we'll take care of that later. And then we'll want to set the visibility. So at the end, frame dot set visible true. And then we're actually going to put a few things between frame dot set layout and frame dot set visible. So anytime you make a significant change to your program, it's a good idea to test it out just to be sure that everything is working just fine. So since we added a frame, we should probably just run this once just to be sure that everything is okay. So here's our calculator. It is 420 by 550. The title says calculator. And then when you hit the X button, it will close out of this program. So now let's work on the text field. The text field is what's going to hold all of the numbers that we type in as well as the result. So let's finish instantiating this J text field first. So we're going to add this after all of these methods related to the frame, but before we set the visibility to true. So let's finish instantiating this. So text field equals new J text field. And then since we're using no layout manager, we'll set the bounds for this text field as in where it's located and the width and the height. So text field dot set bounds. And there are four fields to fill in the X position, Y position, width and height. So for the X position, 50 is decent for Y 25 for the width 300 is good. And for the height 50. Now let's set the font for this text field. So text field dot set font. And since we already declared a font, we can actually reuse this. So I'm going to take the name of our font and place it within the parentheses of this set font method. And then we'll need to add this text field to the frame. So frame dot add text field. And let's run this to test it. So here's our J text field at the top. And right now a user could actually type in a number, even letters. So we may want to limit that. So what we can do is actually use the set editable method and set it to false. So at the end, I'm going to type in text field dot set editable and then false. And when we run this again, we can no longer update this text box. However, this will still be editable if we were to click on a button if we want to type in a number, so that's fine. All right, let's work on adding our buttons next. So we'll do this after the text field methods, but before we add everything to the frame. So let's add our add button first. So add button equals new j button, and then we can add some text to this button. So I'm just going to add a plus sign and then we're going to do this a few times, so I'm just going to copy and paste this a bunch of times. So we have eight different function buttons, so I'm going to copy and paste this seven more times. I think that's about eight. We'll find out. So we'll want a subtraction button, and we'll change the symbol here as well. Multiply, so M-U-L, and we'll place an asterisk here. Divide, so D-I-V and then a forward slash. What else do we got? Uh, 
decimal equals delete and clear. So let's add those. Decimal, DEC, and then we'll just place a dot here, a decimal. Then we have, I already forgot what it was, equals EQU, equal sign, DEL for delete, and we will type in delete here, and then a clear button, and that is CLR, I think. Yep, CLR, and we will type in clear. Now we have all of these different buttons related to functions, and I actually made an array of J buttons called function buttons. So what we'll do is add all of these buttons to our array called function buttons. So I'm just going to copy this title. And if we want to add the first button to the first position of this array, I'm going to add a set of straight braces and type in index zero. And I'm going to set this equal to maybe our add button. And let's do the same thing for the other buttons. So I'm going to copy this and paste it seven more times. And then this will be one, two, three, four, five, six, and I missed one, seven. So we have add first, then sub, multiply, divide, decimal equals delete and clear. Now let's say that we want to add an action listener, change the font, and do a few other things to each of these buttons. Well, since we have eight different buttons, that's a lot of work. What we can actually do is use a for loop to iterate through this array of J buttons. So let's create a for loop that's going to loop eight times. So for int i, and we'll set this equal to zero. i is less than eight. And then we will increment i by one after each iteration. So what we're going to do during each iteration of this for loop is that for each of these buttons, one, we're going to change function buttons from whatever index is here to i. So this will change after each iteration. And let's add an action listener since this is implementing the action listener interface. So add action listener this. All right. Then let's also set the font. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, function buttons at index i, set font to my custom font, which is called my font. And then we'll want to set focusable to false. So sometimes uh, when you click on a button, there's this annoying like outline around the button, that's focusability. We can just set it to false so you can't see that. All right, so let's do something similar for our numbered buttons, but these are going to be anonymous. So this is done in less steps. So let's do this after our for loop. And we're going to create another for loop that will iterate 10 times. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, and then change eight to 10. And we'll change a few things within here. And the first step is that we need to finish instantiating these numbered buttons. We did that with function buttons, but not with our numbered buttons. So let's do that first. So the first thing that we're going to type in is number buttons at index i equals new j button. And then we can add some text to this button. But what we'll do is type in string dot value of i. Uh, I don't know why it does that though. Value of i. Okay, then on the next line, let's add an action listener, set the font and set the focusability to false. So I'm going to copy this from the previous for loop and paste it. And then we're going to change function buttons to number buttons. And that is it for this for loop. Now with the delete button and the clear button, this is not going to be on our J panel that has a graded layout. What we'll do is set the bounds for these separately. So let's work on the delete button first. So delete button dot set 
bounds. So there's four fields to fill in. Let's place this where x is 50, where y is 430. Then this will be 145 pixels long and 50 pixels for the height. I pre-measured this, so I'm not just making up random numbers. And then let's do this for the clear button. So I'm going to copy this, paste it, and this will be the clear button. And we will place this where X is 205. We'll keep this at 430 for the Y position. This is good for the width 145 and the height 50. Then let's add these two buttons to our frame. So frame dot add del button as well as our clear button. So frame dot add clr button. And let's run this just to be sure that everything is working so far. So we still need to add the number buttons and the function buttons, but we should see at least our delete button and our clear button. And they are right here at the bottom. So that's pretty sweet. So we're going to create a J panel to hold all of the different buttons. So let's work on that next. Now let's work on the J panel that we have. So we need to finish instantiating this. We already declared it at the top here. It's called panel. So we'll add that before we add everything to our frame. So panel equals new J panel. And then let's set the bounds for this panel. So panel dot set bounds. We'll place this where X is 50, where Y is 100. And this will be 300 by 300. So it's a square. Now let's set view layout. We're going to use a grid layout. So panel dot set layout, new grid layout. So we can specify rows and columns. So we'll want four by four, but we can also add how much space we want between the buttons. So we'll add 10 spaces or 10 pixels worth of space on each side. And let's also color the background just temporarily, just so we can see this panel. So panel dot set background and let's just set this to maybe gray so color dot gray i'm gonna get rid of this line right after though and then we need to add this panel to the frame so frame dot add panel okay let's take a look so here is our j panel we're going to add a grid of buttons to this j panel However, I don't like this gray background color, so I'm just going to get rid of it. I just wanted to demonstrate where this grid was exactly. Now we're going to add the function buttons and the number buttons to our panel, and we're going to do this in order. So let's begin by adding the button for number one. So I'm going to type panel.add, then our array number buttons at index one, which contains the number one actually. And let's add two and three next. So these are in order. So number buttons two and then number buttons three. Then next, I think we should add the add button. So panel dot add, add button. And let's do the same thing for a few other things. Uh, so this is the second row. So I'm going to change this number to four, five, six, and we'll add the sub button. Okay, then let's do this for seven, eight, nine, and the next row. So seven, eight, nine, and we will add the multiply button, M-U-L button. Then I think we'll add the decimal button next, D-E-C. And then the number zero button, which is in number buttons zero. And then we will add our equals button. So that's EQU. And lastly, our divide button. So that's DIV button. Okay, let's take a look at this now. And here are all of the buttons in the order that we placed them. So it starts at the top and works its way to the right. When it reaches the end, it goes down to the next row. Now let's add some functionality to these buttons. So we'll do that within the action performed method. For our primary step within the action performed method, let's check to see if somebody clicks on one of these numbered buttons. 
So what I think we'll do is put this within a for loop. So we'll iterate this for loop 10 times. So int i is equal to zero. We'll continue this as long as i is less than 10. And then we will increment i by one each time. So what we're going to do within this for loop is we're going to use an if statement. If e dot get source is equal to the number button at the current index of i. Oh, it's number buttons. My bad. Okay, so what we'll do is that we will take our text field. This is somewhat verbose. So set text. And then within the parentheses of this method, text field dot get text. And we will use the concat function to concatenate a string. And it's going to be string dot value of int i. Sorry, this is kind of a long line of code here, uh, but let's try it. So when we click on a number, it's going to update our text field. Looks like everything is working. Let's add functionality to the decimal button. So let's write this outside of the for loop right after it. So we'll use an if statement. If e dot get source method is equal to our decimal button. And within the if statement, we're going to type text field dot set text. And we're going to Actually, I'm just going to copy most of this. Text field dot get text. And then we're going to concatenate just a dot within here. Okay, let's try this. So 3.14. Looks like that is good then. Okay, let's work on the add button. So I think I'm just gonna copy this too to save some time. So we're going to change DEC to our add button. What we'll do here is that we want to retrieve number one. So num1 equals, we're going to use the double wrapper, parse double. And within the method of parse double text field dot get text. And then we are going to assign our operator, which is a character. So operator equals the plus sign. And let's clear the text field too. So text field dot set text, then just an empty set of quotes. Then I'm going to copy this and do something similar for the subtract button. So we're going to change add to sub. So this can stay the same. Operator is going to change to minus, and then we will keep this text the same as well. And let's do this again for multiply. So MUL for multiply button and change the operator. And then same thing for divide. So DIV and forward slash. Okay, so then let's work on the equals button. So there's a few things we need to fill in within here. So if E dot get source method is equal to our equals button. So what we'll do is take num2 equals double dot parse double and then text field dot get text. Then we're going to use a switch statement for the operator. Depends on which symbol they're using. 
that will determine what mathematical operation we're going to perform. So we'll do this within the if statement. We're going to create a switch. And then within the parentheses, we're going to use the operator and compare it. So for the first case, this will be our plus sign. We're going to take our result equals num1 plus num2 and then break. And we'll have three other cases. So case for subtraction equals num1 minus num2. Same thing for multiply. num1 multiplied by num2 and then divide. num1 divided by num2. All right, then outside of the switch, let's just be sure we're getting the right parentheses. Uh, so it's this one after this one. We're going to update the text field. So text field dot set text string dot value of our result. And then we'll assign num1 to be our result. So then we can continue uh, if we want to reuse the same number. Okay, let's try this. So let's take maybe 99 divided by 3 equals 33 times 2. That's 66 minus 5 plus 1.23. All right, looks like everything's working. Now let's work on the clear button, and this one's pretty easy. And I'm just gonna copy one of these, paste it, and then change a few things. So if e.getSource equals the clear button, what we'll do is that we will take our text field, set text to just a empty set of quotes. And let's try it. So one, two, three, let's hit the clear button and it clears out everything. And lastly, the delete button. So if e.getSource is equal to our delete button, there is a few extra steps. So let's create a string variable. Let's just call this string equals text field dot get text method and we're going to store it within our string named string or whatever else you call this. Then let's clear the text field for now. So text field dot set text. And this is only temporarily. Then we're going to create a for loop that's going to iterate through the length of the string minus one. So int i equals zero. And we'll continue this as long as i is less than our string length minus one. Then increment i by one each time. So during each iteration of this for loop, we'll take our text field and use the set text method. And within the parentheses, text field dot get text plus the string, the character at our index, which is I. And that should be it for our delete button. So if we were to type in a number, let's say 3.1415, and we click on the delete button, it's going to delete the last item or character that's in here. And then if we were to hit the clear button, it's going to just clear everything. Guys, I forgot about something. What if we have to input a negative number? We don't have any way to enter that in. My bad. Let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So let's just add a negative button. It won't take too long. And we'll change this array to nine buttons. And then we are going to add this button to our array. So let's increase this to eight and add our negative button. And we'll probably want to create a symbol for this as well. Neg button equals new j button. 
and I will add a negative sign within parentheses. That'll work. And let's increase this for loop to nine. And let's set the bounds. So neg button dot set bounds. I'll just put this next to our delete button and clear button, but I'll make these a little bit smaller for the width. So we'll make these all, I think 100 pixels a piece for the width. So we'll place this where X is 50 or Y is 430. This will be 100 pixels long for the width and 50 for the height. And let's also do this for our delete button. So that's 150, 430, 150. The clear button will be 250, 430, 150, and that's fine. And now we will want to add the negative button to the frame. So we'll do that here frame dot add neg button and let's just make sure that it's on here okay that's not too bad you can still tell that these are the delete buttons and the clear buttons appropriately okay let's add functionality to this negative button so let's go down to the bottom copy one of these and paste it and we'll change delete button to negative button and we will get rid of everything within here. The first step within here is that we'll want to retrieve whatever text is within the text field, and let's store this as a double value within a variable which we'll call temp, because we're only using this variable temporarily. So double temp equals double dot parse double method, and within the parentheses of this method, we'll pass in text field dot get text and that's it for this first line so it's going to take whatever value is within text field and assign it to this variable temp now we'll want to flip the sign on our temp variable and one easy way to do that is just to multiply this variable by negative one so temp multiplication sign equals negative one and then lastly, we want to set the text to whatever our temporary value is now currently. So text field dot set text method. Then we're going to pass in string dot value of our temp variable. And that's it. So let's try it. So five negative times six negative equals 30 positive times one negative equals negative 30. Okay, so that's working then. So the fact that we added a negative button later on in this program is a great example and a reminder of why you should keep your code clean, concise, and organized because if you have to make changes or somebody else has to make changes to your program, it's actually fairly easy to do so, whether you need to delete something, you need to update something, or maybe there's a new feature that's released, it's actually fairly easy to go back and make those changes. So honestly, this was really just a test. I didn't actually forget to add a negative button. <laughs> this was really just a very simple calculator. You can always make improvements upon this. If you would like a copy of all this code, I'll post all of this in the comments down below. But yeah, that's how to make a very simple calculator using Java. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.